What's going on, everybody? Keith Niebuhr with Gators Online and On3, and welcome to another episode of Evals and Intel. And in Evals and Intel, we give you an evaluation on a prospect that's high on the Florida board, and we give you some intel on that player as well. And today's prospect is LJ McCray. He's an outstanding four-star defensive lineman from Daytona Beach, Mainland, Florida. I happen to have a chance to go watch him play just this past Friday night, and he really is an intriguing athlete. You gotta love the body, six foot six, 275 pounds in that range. You gotta love the skill set. He can do a little bit of everything. He can play on multiple spots across the defensive line. And you gotta love that he's got a high football IQ as well. This is a very intelligent young man. Now he is high on the Florida board, very high. The Gators have 22 commitments uh, and they don't have many spots left right now with the number three class in the country four or five remaining that they will be using on high school prospects. But they would take L.J. McCray. He is an absolute dude, as they say. Uh, now, Florida is also high on his board. He has a final five of Florida, Florida State, Miami, Auburn, and Georgia. And we'll talk about his recruitment a little bit later in this, uh, in this episode of Evals and Intel. But first, let's get to the eval part. We're going to show you some highlights, and you're going to have to listen to me talk about the things I like about L.J. McCray. So let's go to that right now. Take it away. You can't talk about L.J. McCray without bringing up his body. You know, when you talk about great pieces of clay, his is certainly right up there among the very best you'll see from a high school prospect. Uh, L.J. is every bit of his listed six foot six and 275 pounds. He has long arms and very little bad weight. This is a Sunday body, period. Now, one of the things that caught my attention was that as big as McGray is, he was able to get skinny in space. And that's a vital trait to have for someone playing inside along the defensive line. We have to fight through one and sometimes multiple offensive line. LJ has the body quickness and overall agility to turn his hips and shoulders and combine that with strength and power to quickly slide past and dip under or around the opposition. In other words, he's not just running straight forward. He's attacking from different angles. Now, one of the things we mentioned up above was McCray's strength, uh, and that too was an eye-opener. I mean, some players that are as tall as him, and remember, he's 6'6", 275, they don't play that strong. Uh, they don't have that center of power, uh, but he does. And Friday night, LJ showed that he could fight off blocks, get a push into the offensive line, and fight through traffic to make tackles with his overall body power. At times, it almost looked effortless. And when you see this up close, then you begin to think, you know, what level can this guy advance to with the help of a college strength program? Now, next up, you have to like McCray's long arms. And, and really, they are a problem for opponents, okay? For offensive linemen, it makes it hard for them to get into McCray's body and maintain a block. That extra reach helps him corral running backs either in traffic or in space. They're great for setting the edge, and perhaps most of all, his arm length creates big-time issues for opposing quarterbacks. As McCray charges toward a QB, he utilizes his reach to either force the player to throw early or alter that throw. This happened on a play Friday night with McCray rushing the quarterback, and it resulted in a mainland pick six. Now, finally, one thing that we loved is that LJ McCray has that extra gear. Now, early in the game, he seemed to kind of just be feeling things out. In other words, he was just kind of out there. And then just like that, he flipped the switch on and literally took over the game. You don't see that capability from very many recruits, but you almost always see it from the truly, truly elite guys. And now some of you may ask, why isn't the switch on every play? Well, because <laughs> there's arguably nothing more physically demanding in football than playing on the defensive line. So you have to pick your spots when you play there. In any event, at McCray's best, he was practically unblockable. He's a true force. All right, we're back. And uh, now in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about L.J. McCray's recruitment. As you can tell, I love this guy as a player. He's phenomenal. And it's easy to see why he's such a wanted man uh, to college programs. Uh, and so, you know, we mentioned that he's got a, a, a final five. Florida, Florida State, Miami, Auburn, and Georgia. So who do we think are the main players? Probably Florida and Georgia, okay? We know Florida really thinks Georgia is a factor in this recruitment. We've been told Georgia feels the same about Florida, but also don't discount Florida State. So probably those three schools with Auburn and Miami on the fringe, but you know he's officially visited those schools. He likes those schools too. So anything you could say is possible. Things can always change. But right now we're focusing 
on Florida, Georgia, and Florida State. So Florida and Georgia, he visited both of those schools the last week of July. Florida was a midweek visit. Then the weekend visit was to Georgia. He's been to Florida probably more than any other school. He loves it there. He's really connected with the coaching staff. He told me the other night that he's incredibly close with three Gator coaches, Mike Peterson, who coaches the edges, um, Austin Armstrong, the defensive coordinator, and the defensive line coach, Sean Spencer. But then I said, well, what about Billy Napier? So I'm close with him too. Uh, they have a good relationship. Billy Napier is heavily involved in this recruitment, as you can imagine, because LJ McCray is such a priority recruit. Um, he almost certainly will be back in Gainesville this fall for a game as well. Now, Georgia hosted him again, like I said, just a few days after Florida in that final week in July. Now, August is a recruiting dead period. Recruits cannot visit uh, colleges. So that last week of July was kind of like a feeding frenzy, everybody trying to get kids to visit their schools. So how did that Georgia visit go? Well, very well. He loves that they're detail oriented. Uh, he loves that they win. Um, and he's pretty close. He's, he's gotten pretty close. And Florida fans aren't going to want to hear this, but uh, he's built a solid relationship with Georgia defensive lineman Jordan Hall, who was a big Florida target uh, in a previous cycle, and he's from Jacksonville. So, um, you know, there's a lot to to, uh, to weigh here between those two schools. At Florida, it's, you've got the proximity to home. He said, it, hey, I'm a Florida boy, all right? But Georgia, you know, coming off back-to-back -back national titles, and they're really selling that aspect. They've had uh, some success getting – uh, defensive lineman in the NFL in recent cycles as well. So he's, uh, you know, he's looking at those two things, a program that's here, that's Georgia, and a program that's here in Florida that is trying to get there. And he said, you know, uh, there's really appealing things to both of those aspects, to both of those situations. At Georgia, you know, you're coming into a, a program that's winning big right now, and he likes that. But at Florida, a program that he says is on the rise, he firmly believes that. He said, look, at, at Daytona Beach Mainland, I came in and my program wasn't much and we helped build it and become something. So both of those situations are appealing. He's built good relationships with people on both staffs. Uh, and then you have Florida State. He's going to officially visit the Seminoles, uh, I believe, the weekend of October 7th. And they're hanging around and they're going to get that last official visit. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, his birthday is October 19th, I believe. And he plans to have a commitment. It's either the 18th or 19th. He plans to have a commitment right after that, sometime after that. Now, he's told other reporters, well, it'll be when it feels right. But he told me the other night, look, uh, it's probably going to happen in October. So we'll see. It could happen in just the, the, the few days after his birthday. But he believes at that time he will be ready to make a decision. So for us, Florida, Georgia, and Florida State, Florida leads in the on three recruiting prediction machine, but it is very tight at this time. We do not, myself and Corey Bender of Gators Online, have projections in for this uh, this player. Uh, it is very close, and for for good reason. Uh, he's uh, he's a it's an all out <laughs> it's an all out battle to land him. But uh, keep an eye on those three schools, and we'll have to see if he shows up at Miami or at Auburn this fall. You know, Auburn's missed. Uh, on a defensive lineman just in the past week, an elite guy, Camarion Franklin, did they now turn their attention back to L.J. McCray and put everything into that? So we will see. Uh, but L.J. McCray, a player you need to keep track of this fall. Uh, he's an outstanding young prospect, and Florida is very much in the hunt. We're going to know pretty shortly, uh, not too far into the distant future, where L.J. McCray is headed. That's it for evals and intel. I'm Keith Niebuhr with Gators Online and On3. Thanks for stopping by, everybody.